So I'm going down a slightly different track. Um, I'm not heritage based. Uh, I'm a environmental archaeologist at uh, UCLan, doing my PhD. It's coming to the end of it now. Uh, but this arose out of my time working in the heritage industry and um, also from my outreach to my PhD. Uh, so just a quick breakdown, um, work within the education sector, what's available to primary teachers, uh, a big uh, festival that my university runs for uh, the primary uh, sector, uh, the outreach activities that I'm designing for primary students and ways in which we can, can uh, improve. Uh, so from when I worked in the heritage industry at a small firm in Chester named Big Heritage, uh, I worked closely with a team that put public engagement in heritage at the forefront of their mission. During this time, I learned a lot about engaging the public in educational settings as well as around the high street. When working in primary schools at the time, we worked closely with a primary school in the Wirral, uh, just as the new curriculum switched over in 2013-2014, uh, where teachers had to uh, include prehistory as part of the curriculum. So uh, they weren't given any warning about this and they had no resources or uh, information at the time. Uh, and it led to complete havoc uh, especially with uh, teachers just using Wikipedia um, and Twinkle. So when we had meetings, um, teachers were spouting misinformation to us, uh, which we had to correct. Um, and we decided to help design resources for them, um, as well as uh, complete outreach activities within those schools uh, to get teachers up to um, scratch with what the new curriculum actually entailed. Uh, from that time to now in the heritage, um, I took forward what I learned from my time in heritage and from the start of my PhD, I started by looking and working within schools and contacting them to create resources they could use in the classroom. Um, I started uh, contacting them to run lectures and handle the sessions to the students, which uh, I got quite a lot of feedback from. Uh, the students absolutely loved it. Uh, having a hands-on experience actually I, with local artifacts. Uh, that was found in uh, Lancashire um, actually gave them a bit of a connection to their own heritage. Uh, so what I saw was when I went back to the, the same schools, um, teachers were promoting field walking, for example. Uh, I had lots of students that I'd met uh, a few months before come up to me with finds to try and identify what they were, um, as well as uh, getting more parents and grandparents involved in uh, doing everyday heritage activities. But the main theme that ran through all of it was the lack of awareness from teachers um, about what was accessible to them, about community archaeology that was going on around them, um, and about how to actually teach the curriculum. Uh, most of it were using Twinkle resources, uh, which are really badly like, designed resources that have misinformation in them. Um, from my uh, work with these schools, the one common theme is kids want to do the heritage work, they want to know more about their past and they want to get more involved. And teachers are the exact same. Um, teachers want more, um, they want more connections with uh, academic institutions and they want more connections with community archaeology groups and they want more access to resources uh, with budget cuts in uh, the primary sector. Um, they're really struggling to well, maintain a high level of uh, output for like sections of uh, history. So, for example, uh, right now, uh, national body, bodies such as English Heritage, Kadira, uh, Kadira, I can never pronounce it, Historic Scotland. So, in the national structures, there's a lot of things that are accessible from guided tours of sites to teaching resources. Uh, Expert led visits, which cost £100 per session, are uh, available at over 400 sites across the UK, which are interactive, hands-on and immersive. Uh, these visits have been specifically designed to meet the needs of different groups across the key stages. The teaching and resources that go along with those sites have been designed to meet the needs of the curriculum, linking what you learn at the property pre and post visit. However, if you don't have the funds to go to these properties, the resources are absolutely useless. So, uh, there's a problem from national bodies that they promote only paid sites uh, and not promote uh, unpaid sites and local sites that are actually free to visit. So resources aren't designed for those sites. 
Historic England um, also have uh, their own uh, initiative called Heritage Schools. And in every single school that I've been to and in every event that I've been to uh, in a primary education setting, nobody knows anything about it. Um, it's the idea behind it was to get more schools. Uh, it's a bunch of resources that are meant to get uh, a wide a range of heritage into schools, but nobody absolutely, like literally nobody knew about it. Um, but from the schools that did take up Historic England, which were mainly in the South, um, they reported that using the programme found 99% agreed learning about local heritage improved pupils' sense of place. And 97% agreed learning about local heritage improved pupils' sense of pride. We also have um, things like the Young Archaeologists Club, which uh, a few schools knew about but didn't know how to get access to, um, which run all sorts of different activities for, uh, for kids. Um, when I was working in Big Heritage, we used to do big school digs, um, which was uh, where we'd go into primary schools, um, we'd get every single year class uh, involved in the entire process of opening the test pit, um, digging the test pit, washing the finds, and then cataloging the finds. And at the end of it all, uh, we'd create a little pop-up museum for them. And in the commercial sector, depending on your area, you kind of get access to um, their heritage officers, which will come out and do talks at school, but that's completely area dependent. Oh, sorry. Uh, so at the Lancashire Science Festival, uh, which is a um, big uh, science festival run by UCLan, it promotes, uh, it, it's, the idea behind it was to get more uh, kids into STEM subjects. So over three days, the first two days are only accessible by um, primary schools. So we get around three to 4,000 people per day um, of that. This year we had, uh, over the three days, we had uh, about 1,100 people visit our stand alone. Um, and what we saw was um, we had about 150 people um, from the two educational days return with the parents and grandparents to come back to our stand, uh, which was really good. Um, what interests the kids the most was the science side of archaeology as well as the hands-on side. So um, although we had loads of information available for them, when they actually got to hold stuff in the hand and actually have a tangible connection to the past, uh, you were taken back by it. They absolutely loved it and adored it, especially with the uh, technology side as well. So we had a VR system set up from one of our sites in California, uh, which you could walk around the cave, inside of the cave. You could uh, practice uh, shooting arrows. Um, which they really took to. And uh, in my side, the um, environmental side, we had uh, snap cards uh, where they could match up um, different tree species with pollen species, uh, as well as make up their own slides and look down the microscope at the different pollen species. And they really took to that one as well. Um, but the main theme that ran through that entire uh, three days was um, kids really want to know more about their local heritage. So we gave them a lot more information that was available um, in Lancashire um, with what was going on. Uh, we told teachers where they could go to free uh, sites, uh, free heritage sites, so it wouldn't cost them as much. Um, and we also gave them our emails if you ever needed information on those sites. Um, from uh, starting my PhD to now, uh, it was wrote into my uh, grant that I had to do a certain amount of outreach uh, per year. So it works out to roughly about a day a week. So what we decided from the beginning is, although we're gonna be doing outreach where we go into classrooms and actually talk to uh, kids and teachers um, about their heritage and actually have handling sessions, we de we're designing a curriculum that works alongside primary uh, teachers to ascertain mm -hmm. what they want from our industry. So uh, this involves sitting down with teachers um, uh, week in, week out, uh, making sure that we're in constant email contact. So we design the curriculum around prehistory, which is my uh, speciality for me and the other PhD student. So uh, the idea behind it is that we're trying to create a free resource that is easily downloadable 
for primary schools. Um, so it doesn't cost them anything it's, um, and it's easy to access and um, it saves teachers time, but they've got the right information at hand. So how can we improve? Firstly, universities should open up and help work with local community groups uh, to pass on new technology and scientific processes to allow them to further explore and protect their heritage. With more involvement in universities where they don't take a controlling role in community excavation and where they offer, um, for example, um, different technologies that they can just take onto site and train people on, uh, like a half day training session, for example. Um, you're getting all this wealth of knowledge from those community groups back into the universities, as well as universities are being able to transfer those skills. So it's a two way process. For publicly funded PhDs, uh, students should have a quota of outreach to fulfill. So when the PhD is put forward originally, it should be costed in um, into PhD offers that um, PhD, so PhD students firstly aren't outdone uh, undercut by funding. But secondly, across if this would happen across the UK, you've got absolutely amazing universities that have got so much different research going on that they can pass on to local communities. And it would also mean that P, um, communities also uh, have a connection to, to those universities. Uh, national bodies should proactively tell the education sector where they can find both paid and no, non-paid heritage uh, sites within their areas, um, as well as uh, start adopting more resources for those non-paid uh, paid, uh, sites. Um, and one of the other things is museums need to op uh, open up their stores because I know for a fact in like uh, Manchester, for example, they're getting rid of loads of stock of just old artifacts, which could easily be uh, benefit schools around the area. Um, or we could have a system where schools pay um, a small amount per year and schools can request certain artifacts when they're teaching these subjects. Uh, so schools are maintaining museums by funding them, but museums are also giving back to the community by uh, providing them with those artifacts. Um, so in conclusion, when we completed work um, at UCLan uh, in schools and had preceding community excavations, we saw students that had participated in school bring along their family. So like at Big Heritage, um, sorry, um, we had four generations of people turn up, which was absolutely amazing. Um, and we found that um, in most of the test bits that I did when I was working for the company, um, in all the local schools that we worked at, they all came back along and we were oversubscribed for, and we had to open up more test pits. Uh, there seems to be a lack of an awareness of initiatives and resources available to uh, primary education in the fact that primary school teachers, although there is stuff out there, primary school teachers just don't know how to access it or where to access it. Uh, from all the teachers I've spoken to in Manchester, they want more involvement. Um, Primary establishment also want choices between paid and unpaid sites. Uh, they want more hands-on work from our industry as well. Um, so if it's available, um, like hand handling artifacts, um, traveling exhibits, uh, where you can install it in a school with information and you can move it from school to school to school. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the other thing is is that the more students got involved with the archaeology and the more they got, um, well, access to handling archaeology, the more they gained a sort of pride in um, their local heritage. Because most uh, when I go out to sites now, I try and take stuff from local areas um, and tell them where it's from and how old it is. And the absolute, yeah, they just absolutely adore it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Any questions?